Yeah, how are you enjoying Dubai so far? Superb. Fantastic. Superb. But a little frightened now. A little frightened now. Why yeah. is this? Tell me more. Uh, you first painted a picture and now you are telling me about exponential growth for family business. Absolutely. The audience is going to look at me with tremendous amount of skepticism. Right. So I'm going to make your task even harder. Okay. Right. I'm going to make I'm going to make your task even harder because I'm going to say let's look at those options that sons and daughters are taking. They're going off doing their MBA, doing their DBA. Mm -hmm. But I suspect that that training is the worst kind of training for running a family business because I suspect that that's orthodoxy personified. And I think if you're going to grow a family business, you need a more radical thought process. Mm -hmm. What do you think? See, uh, basically, uh, first of all, the kind of statistics that you projected is one side of the view. There is another side of the view altogether. And there are millions of family businesses which are in SME sector, which are not even much talked about. Yes. Yep. Second, today, look at the context. You painted the context about the family and the context about the SME businesses. Yep. We had fantastic margin, which is declining. Our costs are going up. We are getting squeezed between the two. Yep. Majority of the family business people go home and tell, in the business there is not fun anymore, as it used to be. Not fun anymore. The first, last decade was a decade in which all businesses made huge amount of growth which they say we had not even dreamt of but last five years now with the margin going down cost going up they are themselves little confused and with that what will happen to the next generation the next generation listens to the father every day that margins are declining business is not fun anymore yeah. and the world glamorizes work for Google, work for IBM, and you know what uh, yep. glamour that you have. Yep. This is one reason. But actually, the scenario is a little different. Why is this confusion taking place? Because all the SMEs or family businesses grew up in last one decade with one business model. And now the business model is changing. And many of us don't know what is the business model changing and how do we handle it? So for example, one of the business model was, there was a story taught in school about hare and turtle story. And it was saying, slow and steady wins the race. Suddenly we find in a world where fast and focused are winning the race and slow and steady are left behind. Yeah. Suddenly we start realizing that with the kind of global and IT, the opportunities available are so phenomenal. We see some people growing tremendously and we say it must be for someone them because we are going through problems. Yeah. The day SMEs and family businesses start realizing that the new time, the changing in the business model, family businesses are the most tuned to take advantage of this. So how do you take advantage of that speedy new model? Because today, in a race between the tortoise and the hare, the hare would win hands down. Yes. The tortoise, tortoise wouldn't even be in the frame. Yes. How, do you, how do you achieve that? So first and foremost was that for family businesses to realize that so far we were inward focus. Now we need to get outward focus to look and see in the world what are the changes taking place and what new opportunities are emerging. I'll just give you one example Please do. that will help yeah. life much more easier. We have one business who is making glasses for the spectacles. Yeah. Now, these glasses are a very, very competitive business. You have an optician who takes your measurements and sends it to the factory. And the factory, they make the glasses and send it back to optician. Yeah. It takes two, three days. The real margin is with the opticians. This factory person doesn't get much margin. And he says, now what to do? Now look at how the model change. This person from India acquired a company in London which was having the similar business of making glasses. Now from this company, they gave computers to all the opticians nearby. They were having 100 uh, clients. To this client, they said that you put, take the measurement and enter in the computer. The moment the data is entered in the computer, next moment they are there in the factory in India. By night, 
2 o'clock, the factory starts. By the morning, 12 o'clock, the production is over. 2 o'clock, it is out. 4 o'clock, Lufthansa flight over to UK. Now, what happened suddenly? In UK, they started getting the product faster than what it was coming from UK at half the price and 100% margin for the person in India. Now, what were the most important aspect of this? One, today is a time of skill. The so-so thing doesn't work. You need superb mastery of whatever we do. Yes. Yeah. Two, we are talking about speed. Speed, uh, the way people want response rate is extremely high. And third is scale. Scaling up the things with a very, very fast scale. Globalization and information technology has made this possible. Yeah. There is another dimension to it where the business model is changing. There was a time where businesses were in commodity. It shifted to product and now is where it is shifting to services. So for every business we need to think about what is the element of services that we will bring in. There is another shift that is taking place. The business is shifting from necessities to luxury. So people were spending a big amount of budget maybe last century into necessities. Today globally, a good amount is going towards luxury. And third thing is, is shifting from essential to entertainment. That is where a different kind of value chain is getting created. So for me, just one point. If the previous generation realizes that the way they have grown in their opportunity today is the time for next generation to sit, to take advantage of the previous generation's tacit knowledge, sit on the shoulder and take their business forward. So my theme generally is a converting a grocery store to Walmart is a great opportunity available to the next generation of family business people. You know, there's a wonderful quote by Henry Ford. You know, he said that to turn $1 into $10 is impossible. To turn 1 million into 10 million is inevitable. And my only concern with the theory that you've just put forward is that in trying to do so much, a business might collapse completely. The challenge, the hiatus in the transformation might kill it. What do you think? See, whenever we talk about climbing a big hill, yeah. there is always talked about that perhaps, you know, you may die, you may fall and you may die. Yeah. But whenever you are climbing big hill, you take support, all the support system. I saw, you know, once uh, in Macau, bungee jumping, a person jumping from the big hill. Yeah. And uh, I, I was just panicked that he will die. But then they say that these kind of people, they don't take risk. They take precautions enough to remove the risk out of it. Well said. So that's the recipe for the aspirational family business. You have an aspirational goal, but you take precautions enough to eliminate as much risk yes. as you can. Yes. So I know that you have this wonderful word, exponential. You're the guru of exponential growth. What are the two recipes, two things that you could say that a business follows these two things and is on the path to exponential growth. What are the two key factors? One, it's good to learn from driving. If your car is in first gear, whatever you keep working, whatever accelerator you keep pressing, 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 it can go only up to a certain speed. If you want to go to a higher speed, we need to change the gear. The way we have been doing business all along is superb. It has brought us up to this level. To take it to next level, we need to change the gear. That's number one. Yeah. And number two, realize the strength of family businesses. All said and done, the statistics that the world talk about, that first generation starts and second generation consolidate and third generation kills, is to me little questionable in the sense that if somebody is born in a business family, for sure there is a certain kind of insight distilled down to them. Yeah. We can take little more precautions by proactively transferring this, generating excitement to get involved into the business. One thing is to work for IBM. Another thing is to create IBM and generating that excitement in the family 
not just for the sake of money. Business is not only for money. Business is something that drives the spirit of entrepreneurship, spirit of excitement, taking the courage, taking the big challenge, overcoming this, and then in that, what kind of satisfaction and joy we have is unmatchable. So I love this phrase, the spirit of entrepreneurship. So our first keynote speaker of the day in a couple of minutes is going to show, is going to explain the golden path that that spirit of entrepreneurship can take you on. Super. And you have opened the door to that path. Please, a huge round of applause for Professor Paramount Thank you so much. Thank you. Honored to see you here. Thank you so much.